My name is Brianna, and I welcome you to the Tales of Adventure, a D&D podcast like no other. So my name is Colton. I am Colton Z9 on Twitter, and I am every Wednesdays at 5 Mountain Standard Time on Obscurum on the We Are Nerdsmith channel. And how how do you say your character's name again? <clears throat> His name is Hadznon Wikina Iskan Javalv Shal Itve Elka Sun Nadine. He goes by Hads Nadine for short. me for the intrusion, but it's not very often I see an air Janasi here. Where are you from? Hello, uh, I am from a distant, a distant land uh, up in the mountains. Uh, we call our uh, little hamlet the uh, Drossel. I believe I've heard of this place. What brought you here? Oh, uh, my job. My job brings me here. Um, hunting creatures of the night. I heard some tales of something nearby here, so I figured I might as well come investigate and do what I do best. Very noble calling indeed. Thank you. I've heard similar rumors as well. It's good to know that someone's here to take care of it. Also, I I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Isra. Isra, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Hads Non Wikina Iskon Javav Shal Itva Elka Sun Nadine. Uh, Hads Nadine for short. I remember Hatsnady and I have no promises on the full name. It is a beautiful name, though. Oh, thank you. Outside my family, no one rarely does. It is very much like a sentence on its own. Oh, yes. Well, um, my clan, we actually have a uh, tradition of whenever someone does something spectacular, they get a new name, um, which is why uh, I have so many. So you've done many spectacular things, then. I like to think I have. I've killed a head vampire, which is what Itve Elka represents. I've learned some magic, which is where sun comes from. Nadine means I've undertaken the test of air and survive, among others. Very accomplished indeed. And did you do all these things on your own, or did you have friends with you? Occasionally I'll have assistance, but I mostly travel alone. Dealing with the head vampire took a few friends of mine, but I haven't seen them for a long time. Sorry to hear that, although I'm also very curious to hear the story of how you not only came across a head vampire, but you managed to defeat it. It actually was a complete uh, coincidence. I was, um, it was one of my first outings outside uh, my town, and, um, I ran into a group who was tasked with fighting a vampire, Warren, and I joined, figured it would be a good cause, and um, I just have done that since. It was unfortunate. We lost one of our members, uh, a good friend named Leon, um, during the fight, but we came out on top. Sorry to hear about your friend, but it is very challenging to go into such a fight and make it out unscathed. Oh, definitely. We were truly lucky to only have lost one. Tell me about these others that you traveled with. How long did it take you to find the vampire? It was a decent, decent journey. We had to make a deal with a dragon. We had to fight a monstrous me- mechanical mech and well, rob a few graves. But, um, Overall, we did what we had to do. You made a deal with a dragon and, th- and fought a mechanical beast? That's not something one does every day. Uh, yeah, no, it was some of the most interesting time in my life. I, uh, The dragon, we had to talk to him due to the fact that uh, he knew where a weapon was located. That um, was the only thing that would be able to 
actually hurt this specific vampire. And then the mech was the thing that was guarding it. Vampire using a mech to guard itself must have been very old and very clever to have built something like that. Actually, he was a rather new vampire. He was just very strong. He had kidnapped a uh, group bunch of uh, artificers to build it for him. That makes sense. Unfortunately, none of them survived. And I must say, the uh, Artifice School of Angelstream is a wonderful school, uh, seeing this mech. It's a wonderful school, and they've actually been worried about where some of their former students went. I guess that answers the question. I suppose it does. I didn't realize they didn't know. They may have learned since then. It's been a while since I last saw them. How long ago? I've actually never been to Angelstream myself. It's a nice little area. It's maybe worth visiting. Especially if you're the one who travels a lot. I do. Um, in fact, after uh, this sort of mission, I was sort of planning on heading that way, barring any other events that might occur. So you may be visiting there soon, or it may be a few years from now. Depends on what fate sets to throw at you. I go where the wind tells me to go. It's fair enough, and are you on any particular adventures right now? Not particularly. Just traveling around, seeing what needs to be done, and doing it. I really get the way to live. It's similar to how I live. I saved the world a few times back in my day, but now I mostly wander around, keep an eye on things, and... See what new heroes are rising through the ranks. Save the world. That's fascinating. It's also a surprisingly repetitive task. There's always something looking to change things. Oh, I get it. I turned down a task a few years back, um, dealing with a lich uh, that was trying to uh, reanimate most of the dead on this uh, plane of existence. Didn't work, obviously. Um, yes, I remember that lich, and it was... I finally could breathe a sigh of relief when they finally took him down. Very stressful few months. Yeah, I was... I just, I didn't feel I was up to the task, personally. I can respect that. There's no point in rushing into something that you're not ready for. Exactly. Especially since, in that case, there were others who were... Ready and able to step up. It wasn't without its losses, but they did succeed. Exactly. It's better that someone who knew what they were doing go than me, who could have possibly gotten in the way. Yes, and also dealing with the lich trying to raise the dead, he could have turned you into a weapon and pointed you in the direction of the next group of heroes to try and stop him. Yes, that as well. Um, I enjoy having... Control over my body. Stitches are very nasty. They are. Terrible, terrible creatures. But I never had to run into one. Actually, that's not always true. I met I met a lich one. Nice guy. It was more it was he was less of a lich and more of a undead cursed person where he could just never die. Similar to a revenant? No, he had all his uh, mental faculties. He just couldn't die. Poor bastard. Terrible way to live. Yeah, but he uh, just lived in a library and just read for I don't know how many years before we came along. And how did you meet him? Um, Just through traveling. Uh, came across this library uh, in a desert about five years ago, would have been. And he was just there. Reading. He helped us on our journey that time, finding a uh, giant scorpion god. And why were they searching for the scorpion god? One of his, uh, I don't know, servants was wreaking havoc in a town nearby. We had to get the scorpion god to revoke the powers of the servant. Was the god not aware of what his servant was doing? The god was in a very, very, very deep slumber, so it was less of he granted the power, it was more the servant was siphoning power. Ah, 
I imagine the scorpion god was not very thrilled to find that out upon waking. No, he wasn't. He was rather cross, but he was also a decent enough chap. Little tired. He returned to his slumber as soon as uh, he fixed his power. Must have been all the gods then. They do not have as much strength as the newer gods. So they do tend to last a little longer. I'll take your word for it. I'm not religious myself. You hear things and learn things and see stories unfold when you travel a lot. I'm well aware of that. I'm curious. What was it that caused you to leave your home? It is every second son's task to leave their home. To go make a name for themselves and for their family. It is just as it's the first son's task to stay and lead the family after the parents uh, step down, and it's the third son's job to guard the village. How many siblings do you have? I have five siblings. That's quite a few. Are they all brothers, or do you have sisters as well? Uh, I have two brothers and three sisters. It's a rather loud household, though I've, that said, I have not visited many Genasi in my time. Yes, our village is sort of a anomaly. It's a life lived in the mountains, so we need a lot of hands on deck, so to speak. Is there a severe family back home? All but my uh, eldest sister. She, like me, is out traveling. Do you get to see them often? Ah, uh, it's it's a travel. It's a long, long way back home. So not as much as I would like. But if I'm ever that way, I try and stop by. Understandable. And I guess that makes each of the reunions that much sweeter. Exactly. I mean, I must say, though, I haven't seen my sister since I've left. Do you know where she went? Oh, somewhere. She also goes wherever the wind takes her. So one day, most likely, we'll run into each other. But until that day, I have no idea. Hopefully you will run into each other sooner rather than later. I hope so. It's been been a while. I I would love to catch up. Imagine you and she both would have many tales to tell. Oh, definitely. She was one of the best wielders of uh, blades I have ever known. So I'm sur- I'm sure she has many tales to tell. What is your weapon of choice? Throwing daggers. I tend to stay further away than most when I'm dealing with creatures. I have this enchanted set of silver daggers. Each dagger has a different rune on it. And when thrown, each dagger can create a different magical effect. Those are fairly powerful weapons indeed. And I also sometimes prefer the distance approach. It's much harder for your enemy to hit you and harm you if they can't see you. Exactly. Plus, back when I was in training, I could not handle a sword to save my life. (laughs) Handling a sword can be a bit of a tricky feat. Were you trained in your home, I'm guessing? Yes. Every child learns how to fight, even just a little bit. Valuable skill to have, especially with the world that we live in. You never know what you're going to come across. Exactly. Better better safe than sorry. Too true, too true. What's the strangest thing you've ever come across? Oh, the strangest thing I've ever come across. Um, hmm. That's an interesting question. Uh... It would be a creature or a situation. Yeah, um, I, I know what the strangest thing I've ever come across is. Have you ever seen a Kuatoa god? I can't say that I have. Well, I would recommend never seeing one. They are fascinating. The Kuatoa have a very fascinating power where if enough believe a god to exist, a god exists. I imagine that can lead to a fairly interesting pantheon. Oh, it was. In fact, we were, uh, me and two other people were visiting this uh, Kuatoa clan and my friend in a inconsequentially stupid 
person named uh, Fatal Eren decided he would try and convince the Kuatoa that he was himself a god. This seems like either a genius idea or a terrible idea. It was uh, both, actually, at, at the same time. It worked, and uh, it morphed him into, well, something horrible. Uh, he grew, like, five heads, not all of them, on his neck. There was one on his hand. He sprouted gills and other fishy parts. It was not the best thing I've ever seen. It was ho- quite horrifying. Imagine there are better, less horrifying ways of becoming a god, although I also imagine that that way's probably faster. Yeah, it was funny because uh, the god that the Kuatoa previously believed in got jealous, and we got I got to watch a uh, god fight another god in a seaside cavern. It was a fascinating, fascinating, horrifying thing to watch. Oh, I almost wish I'd been there. Usually when the gods go to war, they involve large amounts of people, but if I'm understanding you correctly, it was just these two gods fighting each other face to face. So luckily enough, the Kuatoa aren't powerful enough to make their gods full gods. They're just very powerful beings. The gods were small blessings, then. Exactly. Came out on top defeated the old god, and then it took a while, but we convinced the Kuatoa that he, in fact, was not a god, and uh, he t- reverted back to normal. Took a while. About two months. Two months to unmake a god. That's impressive. Honestly, I thought it would uh, take a bit less time. But... It can be a powerful thing. Yeah. I also imagine he never tried to do anything like that again. No, nah, see, he was not that bright enough to realize that actions have consequences that can be repeated. If you do X and you get Y, if you do X later, you're still going to get Y. He, he didn't have sort of that good of pattern recognition, it would seem. And he wasn't with another group of Kuatoa. But it uh, tried to convince another group of goblins this second time that he was a god. That one didn't work. Had to fight our way out of that. Goblins are not always the smartest creatures, but I would not want to run the risk of them realizing I was just trying to dupe them in such a way. That was the rest of the group's opinion, but oh well, what can you do, you know? I imagine they showed their displeasure through poking with very sharp things. Or trying to. That was their intention. I don't know how many uh, goblins I had to uh, knock out before we could uh, get out of there, but it was a decent a decent amount. I mean, for us, you didn't kill them all. Certain adventuring groups I've seen would have just gone murder-happy and then looted their corpses. Oh, we... I personally have known a decent amount of goblins that aren't just pure evil. It's not that good of a stereotype. It can be a little creepy, but I've known some very good ones in my time, including an old friend of mine. Yeah, no, their goblins are wonderful, wonderful creatures. Back home, uh, we have a large goblin population. The Nazi and the goblins living together, that must be interesting. We also had a large Goliath population. I pity the fool that tries to har- bring harm to your village. We, uh, we keep our village protected at any and all costs. Home is always very special indeed and worth protecting. And it helps having Goliaths and goblins on your side. We honestly would not be living without them. At least, I wouldn't be. I feel like there's a bit of a story there. Yes, um, when I was much younger, uh, about two or three, I don't remember much of this, but I've been told this story countless times. Um, there was an incursion on my village. Um, it was a group of uh, cultists worshipping a uh, mountain deity that apparently lived in the mountain range where we call home. 
um, and they believed that us being there was sacrilege. So they tried to attack. Tried being the uh, the key word in that sentence. Occultists uh, can be very, mm-hmm. very protective of what they believe is right, but thankfully, they're not always the sharpest group of people, and still a dangerous situation for sure. Oh, most certainly. But luckily enough, that battle, even though the cultists were about 400 strong, we didn't have a single casualty. How was that achieved? We knew the mountains where we were fighting, and more importantly, we had the high ground. Very useful things to have in battle. Thank goodness cultists are... Their faith blinds them to tactical disadvantages. Which is truly lucky. If they weren't so hard-pressed, um, it would have been a much more difficult fight. I imagine. Have you had any issues with the cultists since then? No, I'm pretty sure the entire group was wiped out in that one battle. Very impressive indeed. I just wish I could uh, have taken part. Battles and wars such as that one are very messy things. Many people wish for the glory that comes with them, but there is also a darkness and a pain that you can't really escape once you've been in one. Oh, I've been in countless. When you do what I do, you have to fight, whether for good or just for the ambient morality. The adventure in our life is certainly not an easy one. No, but it is enjoyable. I get to see new people, see new places, and kill interesting monsters. Killing interesting monsters is always fun, especially if you have some knowledge of alchemy and have friends that you can go to that can create some of the most marvelous things for the strange things you kill. I once travelled with a alchemist uh, by the name of uh, Mishka, and she was brilliant. Uh, she could weave spells in her with her cauldron, and um, I have not seen her in such a long time. I should try and get back in touch. Travelling her w- with her was uh, a rather enjoyable experience. I have friends who are alchemists, and it's likely that they know her, especially if she's as talented as you say. Yeah, she apparently was a big name uh, wherever she was from. I forget the exact name of the town. There are lots of towns out there. It's fun trying to keep them all straight. And by fun, I mean I gave up a long time ago. <laughs> oh, I, I've i stopped bothering to learn people's names, just as... People have stopped bothering to learn mine. Names can be powerful things. That's what I've come to understand. I heard tale once. This could be complete heresy, but a travelling salesman. He went by the name of uh, Mildly Cursed Eddie. Mildly Cursed? Mildly Cursed, yeah. Um, he uh, came across a the name of a very powerful demon. The true name. And he used it to start his salesmanship, I suppose. Start his business. Oh, yeah, exactly. He um sells magically enchanted items. Or at least he did. I have not seen him in some 15 years. Probably Rita came to realize the downside of doing a deal with the demon. Although I'm curious to know what his mild curse would be. Ah, uh, he, he wouldn't tell... Me, when I asked. King with the demon, it's possible that he couldn't. That's actually a very fair point. I never thought about that. From what I've heard, at least, they tend to stick very sneaky little caveats into their deals. Yeah, I've I've personally never uh, made a deal with the devil. Uh, too, too sneaky for me, personally. Very good life choice. Thankfully, most people are... Smart enough to not do so. Though sometimes, special circumstances, even then it's tricky and I don't feel like arguing semantics today. I have not had nearly enough to drink. (laughs) Nor I. Nor I. 
I'll get this uh, another round. And you mentioned that you learned sun magic, correct? Um, some, some magic. Ah. So what uh, magic did you learn? Oh, I, uh, I know a few spells here and there. Uh, can't say I'm a magician. I can create, uh, fires. I can, uh, mend small objects. Create some mystical lights. Not much. Yeah, you don't need a lot of power as long as you know how to use what abilities you have. And those sound like some useful ones, especially used correctly in the right circumstance. Oh yeah, creativity is much more powerful than, uh, well, power. It's true for most people, although I've, I know some barbarians who would argue that power is more powerful than creativity, but it's mostly because they hit things harder when they're angry. And when they're angry, they're not thinking of creative ways to hit things most of the time. If it's personal, the reason they're angry, they can get very creative. That's a very fair point. I've never actually uh, traveled with a barbarian. I've worked with a couple from time to time. It's an interesting experience. I can imagine them being all always angry. Uh, they're not always angry. It's mostly just when someone decides to pick a fight with them or threaten their friends. That's when it's like something takes over them and they're so full of rage. It's impressive to behold, but you never want to be on the other side of that. Never. Yeah, no, they uh, sound absolutely terrifying. They're good friends to have, though. I'll uh, try and see if I can't uh, meet one one day. Never know when to find them. They come in all shapes and sizes from what I've learned. Yeah, no, I've... I had a friend once who knew a barbarian. Uh, apparently it was a uh, gnome. I always found that funny. So short, but yet so full of rage. Not many people who are short and full of rage, but most of them are the barbarians. I'm curious to meet this one, though. Yeah, um, I unfortunately couldn't direct you to wherever they live. But who knows, you might meet them in your journeys. Perhaps. I've... I meet all kinds in my journeys. I don't really stay in one place for very long unless there's a situation which requires my attention. For the most part, I stop by, see how things are doing, and see if there's any strings I need to pull or people I need to nudge. There are a lot of things going on in this world. That there are. Uh, I honestly just wish things just slowed down. As much as I enjoy adventuring, it's... Uh, retiring? I've been considering recently uh, retiring back home. Retirement is a good option. What would you do if you went home? Well, I have a lovely plot of land right near a cliff. Overlooking a cliff, rather. And uh, I think I would just build my house there. And enjoy life, I suppose. Guard your home? Well, yeah, of course. I uh, wouldn't want to go unguarded. But just take it easier. You could probably teach a trick or two to those at, to those at your home that you've learned along the road. Oh, yeah, I never even thought about that. I could help with the teaching of the youngins. It would be a very fulfilling retirement. Yeah. That is assuming that life lets you retire. I've been trying to for years now, and still stuff to do. Oh, yeah. I tried to retire about two years ago, but then something came up as they, uh, as they always do. Was that the incident with the vampire, or was it a different situation? Uh, it was the uh, situation uh, with the scorpion god. Ah, yes. Yeah. I was uh, making some treks along a desert, and then I got roped in. What was the scorpion god like? We didn't talk much. He was very angry, and I didn't want to uh, anger him any further, lest I be on the uh, business end of his tail. Good choice. He seemed to enjoy games. He challenged one of our party members to a, a game of... Uh, 
I forget the name of it, but it uh, was a dice game. We won, luckily enough. I think he let us win. It was an interesting, very stressful experience. Imagine. Thankfully, some gods are rather good-natured. Well, for them most part. Some of the older ones, and newer ones too, forget how intimidating they can be to the to those who are mortal. It was truly a terrifying experience, seeing how powerful this uh, this creature was. Well, I guess that's be thankful that he is also friendly for the most part, and that he's uh, unlikely to be woken up for a long, long time. I sure hope so. Me too. We actually stole the bell's clapper that we used to awaken it and hid it. Well, I probably shouldn't tell you that, where we hid it. Just to be safe. Understandable. It was probably a wise choice. Last thing we need is some young idiot accidentally going and ringing it. Exactly. As if one does not know how to wake a god, they shouldn't be waking a god. That is... A very, very correct statement. There's some that should never be woken at all, but that's all I'm saying on that. I am in full agreement with that. Changing the subject, um, where do you think you'll go from here? Well, from here, I'm sort of dealing with whatever nasty lives in this area. But after that, I truly don't know. I'm not sure if I'll retire, keep doing what I'm doing, or, uh, who knows, I might settle down and, I don't know, make chairs for a living. That might be fun to do for a few years. Still working, but not uh, not fighting. Something to keep you busy, but not something to put your life at risk. Exactly. But then again, I have no eye for the aesthetic. There is need for things that are more functional than they are aesthetically appealing. Nah, fair. Can't get as much of a price out of them, unfortunately. If you make something that's good quality and it's meant to be more defensive than decorative, you can get paid well. True. Especially when you're building larger things, since if you find someone to perhaps partner with who has a better eye for the aesthetic, you can work together, and then you have the best of both worlds. That's a very, uh... Astute point. It all depends on how you look at things. I've never, uh, never quite considered working with someone. It's also can be nice to travel with people as well, but as you have not that experience, sometimes people decide to go different ways for varying reasons. Oh yeah, um, Mishka, that uh, alchemist that I was talking about earlier, she uh. She decided she was uh, going to try and become a god after she heard the story of uh, the Kuatoa incident. I haven't seen her since, but I just hope she's doing well. If I run into her, I will let her know that you're thinking of her. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you. And I'll try and get word to you, letting you know how she is, assuming I can find you. Thankfully, I know people most everywhere. That's that's helpful. Very helpful. I uh, I just wish I knew more people nowadays. Oh, plenty of time to meet people and make new friends along the road. And now, if, I, if you find the right people and let them know that you are a friend of Estra's, you may find yourself with new friends. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be considered uh, one of your friends. You are a good person. You seek to do good. I consider you a friend. Thank you. I'm honored. And hopefully next time we meet, I will be able to remember your full name. I hope so as well. And I would like to know I also do consider you a friend. I very much appreciate that. Why don't we get another round of drinks? Sounds fantastic. Tales of Adventure is directed and produced by me, Brianna Toiber, as part of Pseudonym Social, a creative podcast network. 
The music is by Patrick Chester of Chester Studios. To see more of his work, visit his website at chesterstudios.net. Find out more about Pseudonym Social by visiting our website at pseudonymsocial.wordpress.com. If you like what I'm doing and would like to support this podcast, please go to patreon.com slash pseudonymsocial and choose one of the tiers connected to Tales of Adventure. You can also leave a review on iTunes to make our show easier to find for those who need it.